Hey everyone, so today I'm going to talk about uh, a little bit about understanding electric field and electric potential integration. So let's say you have an object, right, shaped like that, and let's say, you know, it's a 3D object, and someone asks you to find the electric field of the object. And the electric field of an object is, or rather, of a point charge is given by kq over r squared, which you probably know. And so that's for um, point charges specifically. Uh, and there should be, sorry, a unit vector in there just to denote that the electric field is a vector, right? And so if someone asks you to find it for this, though, you may say, well, this is for point charges. I don't know how to do this guy. And then what I'm going to tell you is you can treat this object as just a bunch of point charges very closely together. And you can treat this guy as what I'll call a nearly uh, infinitesimal uh, I definitely spelled that wrong uh, infinitesimal object. And so because it's infinitesimal, we can treat this point charge, because we're going to need to denote, denote its charge somehow, as delta q, where this delta is just taking care of this nearly infinitesimal part, uh, because, as I can write here, uh, this delta is nearly zero, but not quite zero, so we just need to acknowledge that in our notation, and that will become uh, evident when we go to do integration. But for now, let's continue uh, pretending like we didn't know how to do integration. And so what we're going to say is if we could somehow sum up all of these charges and then uh, take into account the geometry of the object and somehow fit this equation in there, this uh, side of the equation, we could get a pretty good approximation for the electric field generated by this object. Because each uh, nearly infinitesimal uh, charge is going to contribute to this electric field. And so let's see if we can put some math to that. So how about the limit as n goes to infinity for the sum starting at n is equal to 0 going to n for k delta q over r squared r hat is equal to the electric field. And so if we're dealing with this problem all the time, we're going to have to write this part, the limit n goes to infinity, starting at 0, going to n a lot. And so that's where we get our integral symbol from. We just write this as the integral, and then k dq over r squared r hat equals e. And that guy is a big hat today, but the uh, important part about this change over here that I'm just going to point out, which is more just notation for your uh, understanding, is that I changed from this uh, delta there to this d because this delta is delta, and that's a Greek letter. This sum is a Greek letter. This integral sign is not a Greek letter, so we need no uh, we can't have Greek letters in this uh, arrangement of our equation, but we can have them here because this is Greek. So we're just going to denote this delta as d. Um, and that's what we put in here. And then similarly, for our electric potential, we can write that v is equal to kq over r, right? And two important things to note here, uh, that v is not a vector, not a vector, as noted because there's no uh, vector symbol here, I haven't written that, and that also a lot of times uh, people forget that there's no squared here, there's no squared here for this v. And so that's really important and this is also for point charges, this guy, so I'll just make a note of that. Okay, and so uh, with that in mind, we can still write that v in the exact same way as we did for these guys. So we can just write the limit 
as n goes to infinity for sum of n, n equals to zero, k dq, or sorry, that should be delta q. I'll uh, undo that for the purposes of our notation. There we go. So k delta q over r um, will give me v, and then similarly I can write the integral k dq over r gives me v. And so now I'm just going to run through a few steps with you guys because I know right now it seems pretty general and you're probably thinking, oh, this doesn't seem like horrible, horrible, uh, about some steps that will help you or hopefully help you uh, when solving problems. And so if we just go down and then I'm going to write out that electric field equation again. with the vectors. Um, what are some steps that we can do when solving problems like this? So the first step I usually do is draw a diagram. I'll call it a free body diagram. And then this will help with the second step of uh, looking for symmetries. So I'm just going to say symmetries. And um, now you may say, oh, well, that object that you drew up there that didn't look very symmetric and I'm gonna say no it isn't but in most cases in most tests you'll be dealing with stuff like you know a cylinder or uh, a cube like something to that effect so uh, you don't need to worry about the blob that was just for conceptual understanding and then another step that you do after that is I'd like to think of a chef chopping up the object into dq and dx and so you may say, well, why, why do I need this dx guy here? He doesn't really seem to be doing anything yet. And I will say, uh, just wait, because he will be doing something. Uh, and so next, there's usually some type of substitution that you need to do with uh, surface charge or volume charge or, or sorry, surface, density, surface charge density, volume charge density, or linear charge density. And... I'll just make a quick note that, you know, the surface charge density is equal to the charge over the area. The volume charge density or volumetric charge density is charge over the volume. Uh, I'll make that be clear. And that the linear charge density is the charge over the length. And then we can differentiate each of these to just add, have d's here. And using these expressions, we can usually uh, rearrange them to somehow get this dx up here using these bottom parts because these bottom parts will have, you know, a geometric uh, equation like the equation of a sphere or, or equation for the volume of a sphere or something like that that we can uh, get our dx for. And so after that, We uh, can then solve, if we're doing the electric field, we can then solve for the r hat in our electric field equation, which was right up there. We can solve for this guy. And then you can also use trig for that. I'll show you how to do that in the example videos. Some people like that better. And then finally, because we're integrating, it's good to integrate the expression that you get. And then the final step is just to celebrate because these questions can be quite hard and so I would really encourage you to do as many examples as you can and uh, don't give up you know keep going I'm gonna post lots of examples on how to do them so just keep going through them uh, really until you get them seek help and you guys have got this yeah so good luck and uh, hope this helped